Welcome to another episode of the Mapscaping Podcast. My name is Daniel and this is a podcast for the geospatial community. So this episode is going to be a little bit different. There's no guests in the studio today, it's just me. And, and when I say studio, I mean my the spare room in our house. It is covered in blankets and other soft things, hoping to sort of blanket the noise a little bit and make it more bearable for you. So yeah, th- this is going to be a little bit different. It's just me. And today I want to talk about ideas and, and how we get them to spread. It's the start of a new year. At the time of recording, it's the 5th of January, 2022. And it seems to me that it's a good time to start thinking about, well, what is this next year going to look like? Where are we going? And how are we going to get there? So today I want to talk about my idea, this podcast. But this is not an episode about me and my ideas. It's an episode about you and your ideas. This episode is about having an idea and being an advocate for that idea, about being generous and persistent enough to make the idea spread. So again, this podcast was my idea. My idea was that people like us might enjoy a podcast like this. Your idea might be totally different. Your idea might be, I could change my career. Maps could look like this. This doesn't have to be a manual process. Maybe your idea is, this is broken and I'm going to try to fix it. These are all ideas. So let's assume for a second that you have an idea. What next? Well, I I can't, I can't know what your journey with your idea is going to look like, but I can tell you what mine was like. And perhaps by sharing my journey, it might help you with your journey. In January 2019, I published the first episode of the Mapscaping podcast. At that stage, Mapscaping as a brand had around 150,000 followers across various social media platforms. And you might be thinking, well, you know, with 150,000 followers, people that had put their hands up in a digital world and say, yes, I am interested in going where you are going. Of course, your idea was going to work. Of course, it was going to spread. But it didn't. It didn't catch on. Most people who saw my idea didn't get the joke in, in because of that, they didn't pay attention to it. So the first six months of producing this podcast, not a great deal happened. Each week I would spend around 20 hours recording, editing and publishing a podcast episode and almost no one was listening. Now, three years later, it's still pretty much the same. Almost no one is listening. Out of the 7 billion people on the planet, basically none of them are listening to this podcast. And and there's a bunch of reasons for this. And one of them is that this is not for everyone. This is for a very specific someone. So let's think about who this idea is for who this podcast is for. It's for people like us. So you need to be somehow involved or deeply interested and engaged in the geospatial industry, geospatial things, to want to have anything to do with this podcast. You also have to enjoy podcasts. You have to enjoy long-form content. And you need to either engage with my voice or in some way find it bearable to listen to 40 minutes to sometimes an hour of me talking to somebody else. So I think... You can imagine the Venn diagram of this. This this is a small population of people on the planet. Like Again, almost no one. So let's think about this. So at the start, and this is still largely true today, we had about 150,000 followers, about 30 to 40,000 visitors coming to mapscaping.com each month, plus the discovery you get natively across the different podcasting platforms. So with podcasting platforms, I mean Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, places like that. So out of those tens of thousands of people that were discovering the podcast each month, the vast majority didn't care. And again, this is largely true today. Most people don't care. So this podcast is approaching the 500,000 download mark. So 500,000 total downloads for the, I think, 140 episodes that I've published over three years. But still, the vast majority of people that discover this podcast don't care about this podcast. Okay, so I assume you're getting the point here. Most people on the planet don't care about this podcast, and yet this podcast is relatively successful. And and, and there's a bunch of different ways to to measure success, but let's talk about download numbers. Not because download numbers are the best metric in the world to use, but because they're the easiest to understand. So the medium podcast, if you look over all of the podcasts in the world, the medium podcast gets 29 downloads in the first seven days. Podcasts in the top 25% get 88 downloads in the first seven days after being published. Podcasts in the top 10% get 321 downloads in the first seven days. The top 5% of podcasts are downloaded 755 times in the first seven days. And the top 1% of podcasts in the world get 3,763 downloads in the first seven days. So this puts this podcast, these numbers are basically saying that this podcast, the Mapscaping podcast, is in the top 2% of podcasts in the world. Now, I'm not telling you this to brag. I'm merely pointing out that this podcast is almost for no one. And yet, relative to other podcasts, it is very successful. 
And I think part of its success is that it is for someone. It's not for everyone. It's for a very specific someone. Okay, so what can we learn from this? How does this help you with your idea? Well, I, I think knowing that we don't have to build something for everyone makes it a lot more approachable. You simply need to build something for someone. So be specific about your idea. Who is it for? What is it for? Increasingly, our problem is not does anyone care. Our problem is can we find the people that care? Obscurity is the enemy here. So, so let's look at a few examples of very specific products, very specific ideas. Okay, so, so here's a pretty specific idea. Tolkien style maps. Yeah, so Lord of the Rings style maps. Here's a shop on a platform called Etsy, and that's all they do. So this shop that sells these very specific style maps has had 15,000, over 15,000 sales since they opened, and well over 4,000 five-star reviews. I hope that we can agree that this is a very specific idea for a very specific person. Okay, so, so here's another very specific idea that I found. T-shirts for data scientists. Could you imagine going to your friends, your family, people that you trust, that you respect, and that you want their respect back, and saying to them, hey, I've got an idea. My idea is that I'm going to make t-shirts for data scientists. It sounds crazy, and yet here it is, t-shirts for data scientists. You have to be a very specific kind of person to want to walk around with a t-shirt that says, talk data to me, or my personal favorite, I like to walk in random forests. So Lord of the Rings style maps and t-shirts for data scientists and a podcast for the geospatial community. These are very specific ideas, and yet they are working. So again, I, I don't think the problem is, does anyone care? I think the problem is, increasingly, can we find those people that care? So back to your idea. What does this mean for your idea? Well, it means that it's okay if your idea is not for everyone. In fact, I hope it's not. I think there are very few spots left on the shelf where the average person goes to get their average stuff. I don't think anyone cares about average stuff. I think people want stuff that's specifically for them. And, and yeah, I, I know that average is not a person. It's a position on a graph, but I hope you get my point. So let's pretend for a second that you've got your idea, you've been specific about it, and you know what it's for. You know who it's for and what it's for. What do you do now? Well, there's a long way between having an idea and executing it. And along the way, you're going to run into things like imposter syndrome. There's going to be a little voice in your head that says, am I good enough to bring this idea to the world? So this is much easier said than done, but I hope that you don't wait for someone to pick you. I hope that you pick yourself. And what does it even mean to pick yourself? The truth is, I don't exactly know what it means to pick yourself, but I think it might be more than just putting your name on a list and waiting for your turn. And it's not about having all the answers. It's somewhere in the middle of those two things. Perhaps it looks something like this. This might not work, but I have looked at the risk of failure and weighed it against the risk of not trying at all. So I have decided that I have less to lose and more to gain. So I'm going to give myself permission to try this new thing. And you still might have this voice in your head saying, yeah, that, that's great, give yourself permission, but is it going to be good enough? Can you do this? Well, good enough for who? Good enough for you or for the people that you're seeking to serve? And, and, and when are you expecting it to be good enough? On the first try around? The second? The third? The fourth? So I, I went to university for five years. So three years of a bachelor's degree and then five years to get my master's. And I think I had to go through that process to be good enough for my first job. That was five years of practicing. And then when I started my first job, I think I probably was capable of solving about half of the tasks that I was given. I had so much more to learn. So I guess the question is, when do you think that you're going to be good enough? And is continuing to wait going to make you better? So it's not clear to me that every episode that I publish is the best it could be, but I do it anyway. And if I look at the download numbers, I mean, they confirm this. Exactly half of the 140 episodes that I've published to date are below average in terms of download numbers. In fact, in any metric you want to measure them by, half of them are below average. What am I supposed to do with this? Were they not good enough? Should I not have done them? Should I not have published them? Did they not help anyone? I guess the only thing I really know for sure is that I never would have got here where I am today if I hadn't have started, if I hadn't have tried, if I hadn't have made those episodes that were, that were really successful in terms of downloads. And I wouldn't have made those episodes if I hadn't made the ones that were less successful in terms of download numbers. I guess my point is I couldn't choose only to do the good work, only to do the work that was popular, only to do the things that worked. I, I can't choose that. that. That's not a decision I can make. The decision I can make is to do the work, to do my best, to show up, to be consistent. In the hope that if I do that, that I will earn your permission to try again next week. But yeah, so, so maybe this week wasn't for you. That's okay. It's not for everyone. It's for someone. All I'm trying to do is to do my best and to earn your permission to try again. That's it. 
Okay, so, so back to your idea. You have an idea. You understand who it is for. You understand what it is for. You know that your first time round isn't going to be good enough, but you're going to do it anyway. You know that it might not work the second time, but you're going to try anyway. You're going to make a promise and keep it. Well done. You're a long way. So now all that's left to do is to execute on your idea, to make that map, to write that piece of code, maybe to start that business that you've been talking about. Oh, and, 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 and there's one little thing left. You also need to be an advocate for your idea. You need to be a champion for your idea. You know, you hear time and time again, we live in a noisy world. And what that means for you and your idea is that it won't spread by itself. You have to help your idea spread. You have to be a champion for it and for yourself. So there's a couple of ways of championing your ideas, of being an advocate for your ideas. An approach a lot of people take is to yell at people. We see this all the time on social media. People standing on their digital street corner yelling at people that are passing by. The thing is, I, I can't remember the last time I changed my mind because someone yelled at me. Another approach is to take your idea to the people that you made it for and say, here, I made this for you. And to do this on a consistent basis. So in marketing world, we learn that people need to hear a message about seven times, at least seven times before it starts to stick in our minds. So consistency is really important here. And if I, I think about each podcast episode as an idea, and I can see that some ideas resonate more than other ideas. So again, going back to this, the, the download numbers as a metric here. So if one episode does poorly in terms of download numbers, is it because it was a bad idea? Or was it because I did a poor job of marketing my idea, of being an advocate for it? And what I've learned is that there's no such thing as one size fits all when we think about messaging, or we think about the way we package our ideas. So Twitter is my social media of choice. Twitter and LinkedIn. And I experiment a lot with the descriptions of each episode, with the links that I put in there, with the images that I use. And it's really interesting to see which ones resonate more with people. And I, I don't have any sort of hard and fast rules I can give you, but I am saying that if you believe that your idea is making things better, that it's going to help people get to where they're trying to go, then, then please be generous with it. If it's not resonating with people, try changing the packaging, change the wording, change the messaging. Try again, I guess is what I'm saying. It might not work the first time. In fact, it probably won't. But the generous thing to do here is to keep trying. Now, I'm not suggesting that you blindly stumble around trying to force your idea onto other people. But I am suggesting that if you have something that's going to help people, then it's worth trying again. Okay, so, so we've discussed two options now in terms of getting our ideas to spread. of Being an advocate for our, for our ideas, of marketing our ideas. One of them was to yell at people. The other one was to go to the people that we made it for and say, here, I, I made this. I think it might help you. And I guess one thing we need to consider when we're, when we're doing either of these two approaches is how shareable is our idea? And, and I want to give you an example here. So there's a website called thetruesize.com. And the idea of the website is to show people the distortion that happens when we use the Mercator projection. So you can go to this website and, and you'll see three countries centered over Africa. So we see the US, India, and China. And if you grab one of those polygons, they're all different colors, if you grab one of those polygons, you can drag it around and move it up and down, left and right, across the, the map, and you can see how it'll distort and change depending on the distance from the equator. So the idea of this website is people might find it interesting to see the distortion that is caused by the Mercator projection. But the great thing about this website is it's very shareable. And what do I mean by shareable? Well, this is not just a website. This is, a, this is actually a, a content a content platform. So what happens with this website is that people find this amazing, right? So you can uh, search for different countries, let's say in New Zealand, and you can keep searching for New Zealand a variety of times, and every time you search for it, a new New Zealand polygon will pop up. A geometry of New Zealand will be visible on the screen, and you can move it around. And you can do things like, how many times will New Zealand fit into Greenland? How many times will Greenland fit into Australia? And then you can take a screenshot of that and share it on your social media platform. Look what I have discovered. And a lot of people have been doing this. So this website has no search engine optimization. There is no blog attached to it. It is a single page. It has no social media following. But because it increases the status of the people that come here, that spend hours arranging multiple polygons, seeing how many times Denmark can fit into Australia, and then taking a screenshot of that, sharing it. This raises their status. They look what I have made. Look what I have discovered. And they share it. It's shareable. And I think this is a big part of the reason why this website gets almost 2 million visit visitors a month. And depending on what sort of website analysis tool you use or traffic analysis tool you use, you'll see that 
people are spending up to four minutes, five minutes on the single page websites, moving these countries around. That's the average, the average user spends about four minutes on the site. This is absolutely amazing. And I think the reason we're, they're doing that is because it's shareable, because there's something to do there, because it's something to learn there, because they increase, they go up in status when they can say to their network, hey, look what I made, look what I discovered. I find myself talking about Ku Shang Wu on this podcast a lot, and that is probably because he is so prolific with his ideas and the things that he makes. So one of his ideas was, if I make a simple app that lets people create time-lapse animations using satellite imagery of very specific geographic areas, that this would be helpful, that people would enjoy that, that they would share that. And they do, because it's, they share it because it's cool, because it's better for them to share it. Look what I have made. And so the idea spreads. And so I, and so I think for the challenge for, for you and for your idea is how are you going to promote it? And is your idea shareable? Is it better for the people that you made it for it if they share it? Think about the things that you share, the things that you promote. Can we build some of that into our ideas? So I try and do the same thing with this podcast. I try and make it as shareable as possible. And my approach to this is each and every guest that comes on this podcast, I spend a long time with them, coaching them, helping them. I want them to shine. I want them to be the hero of the story for a couple of different reasons because it makes better content for you. I want to, And I also want to make something that I am proud of, that I know that if I do a great job, of making them shine, of making them the hero of the story, of making something that they are proud of, that they will share this episode with their network and the idea will spread. So here we are at the start of 2022 and you've just spent a quarter of an hour listening to me talk about ideas. I hope some of this resonated with you. I hope that you decide to be generous with your ideas this year and I hope that you decide to pick yourself and and be an advocate for yourself and for your work this year. And if you're not ready to put your ideas forward, I hope that you'll support others. I hope that you'll see ideas out there in the world that you want to see more of. And I hope that you'll help them spread. And I hope that when you see new ideas, I hope that you'll realize that behind each idea, there's someone like us. So I realize this podcast episode has been a little bit different. Perhaps it's not what you signed up for. And if that's the case, if it didn't resonate with you, I hope that you'll give me the opportunity to try again next week. We'll talk then. Bye.